I want to update everyone on just one thing, which is uh, what's been happening at our borders and especially at Dover. Last night at 11 p.m., the French government imposed restrictions on UK freight crossing to France when accompanied by a driver. And so today I chaired a meeting of the government's emergency uh, COBRA committee in order to coordinate a UK-wide response. And it's vital first to stress that these delays, which are only occurring at Dover, only affect human-handled freight. And that is only 20% of the total arriving or departing, arriving from or departing to the European continent, which means the vast majority of food, medicines and other supplies are coming and going as normal. You may also be aware, in fact I'd be amazed if you weren't, that the government has been preparing for a long time for exactly this kind of event. So working with the Kent Resilience Forum, Kent County Council and Highways England, uh, we've activated our long prepared plans with the result that we've already been able to reduce the number of lorries waiting on the M20 from 500 to 170. The site at Manston Airfield is ready to cope with any overflow. And of course, we're working with our friends across the channel to unblock the flow of trade as fast as possible. And the government at all levels is uh, communicating with our friends in Paris. I've just spoken to uh, President uh, Macron. We had a very uh, good call and we both understand each other's positions and want to resolve these problems as fast as, as possible. And I, I know that Grant is also speaking to his counterpart. And uh, we're working to a solution, as I say, uh, as fast as we can to allow freight traffic to resume between the UK and France and to ensure that lorries can travel in both directions in a COVID-secure way. I want to stress that we in the UK fully understand the anxieties of our friends about COVID, their anxieties about the new variant. But it's also true that we believe the risks of transmission by a solitary driver sitting alone in the cab are really very low. And so we hope to make progress as fast as we possibly can. I want to repeat that these delays only apply to a very small percentage of food entering the UK. And as British supermarkets have said, their supply chains are strong and robust so everyone can continue to shop normally. And to our international friends and, and partners, uh, I want to say uh, very frankly that we understand uh, your concerns. And uh, I, I hope everybody can see that as soon as we were briefed in, in uh, UK government on the, uh, the fast transmissibility of this new strain at, I think, 3.15 on Friday afternoon, uh, we lodged all the necessary information with the World Health Org Organization, and we took prompt and decisive action uh, the very next day uh, to curb the spread of the new variant within the, the, the UK. And we want to work with our colleagues, with our friends around the world, as we have from the beginning to develop new treatments and uh, to develop uh, new vaccines, as we have. And I, by the way, I can today announce that over half a million people, more than 500,000 people uh, in the UK, have now received their first dose. Uh, as we've seen throughout this pandemic, this virus, alas, can move all too swiftly uh, from one nation to another, but it is steadily being defeated by an international response, and an international response that is bring, bringing the hope of vaccines uh, to the entire world, and in that, the UK will continue to play uh, its full part. I now hand over to, to Secretary of State for Transport, Grant. Thank you very much, um, PM. Um, it's just worth uh, knowing what's going on in Kent. Before I uh, came here, I checked on the latest numbers. Uh, there were, last night at its height, about 500 uh, lorries through to this morning, uh, which were queuing effectively uh, on the motorway. Uh, that's now down to, last time I checked, 170, 174 lorries. Uh, and uh, there are a few more which will be in a, a, a holding area called TAP, uh, which is down uh, close to Kent. But the main message is, um, please don't travel um, to Kent. Uh, most people should be staying at home. Everybody in Tier 4 must stay at home, and in Tier 3, stay very local. And uh, we're grateful also for the hauliers, the lorry drivers, for 
uh, steering clear as well. That message has been very well understood today, and as a result, we haven't seen uh, any uh, problems in the, uh, in the area. Uh, most of the lorries who are there uh, are uh, primarily European hauliers looking to uh, transit back across uh, to the continent waiting. Uh, we will open up uh, Manston uh, Airport, as you said, Prime Minister, uh, though uh, for the time being it won't be uh, for large numbers uh, of lorries, uh, but more for uh, management um, purposes. And that's a facility that we have ready because we've been planning for the end of the transition uh, period. Uh, one other development as well is that we'll use the movable barrier which has been constructed uh, on the motorway, on the M20, and that enables us to uh, set up a contraflow, something which should normally take about a month to do uh, in just a few hours uh, overnight, and that will enable traffic to flow in both directions on the motorway. That's part of uh, what's called Operation Brock, as opposed to Operation Stack, that a lot of people will have heard about many times over the years. So what's happened today has been the equivalent of uh, what might happen in very severe weather conditions, sometimes if there's a strike over in uh, Calais, or when uh, my ferries, for example, uh, uh, cause several weeks of disruption. Uh, and what's happened today uh, has uh, been well picked up by the Kent Resilience Forum uh, and others uh, as we seek to resolve the overall issue. Brill, thank you very much, Grant. Let's go to, uh, uh, Patrick, I don't think you, you want to add anything at this, this stage. Let's go to, to David from Portsmouth. Good afternoon. Living in Portsmouth, we stand alone in Hampshire as a tier four area surrounded by tier two boroughs such as Fairham, which shares our major hospital. We have family that live no more than five minutes away that are classed as tier two, who we cannot celebrate with under the tier four restrictions. When the government introduced Tier 4, why was this not blanket applied to the whole South East? Is the Prime Minister stating that this new Covid strand, which is 70% more transmissible, will not be able to cross into different council boroughs, which in some cases are no more than 100 yards away from each other? Well, David, I, I fully understand the frustrations of, uh, of people who feel that they're in uh, too uh, high a, a tier and uh, they, they, they wish that uh, they weren't, or they, that uh, uh, they feel it unfair that another adjacent area is in a, is in a, is in a different uh, position from them. All I can say is we have to act on the basis of the epidemiology, uh, David, as we uh, see it. Uh, we looked at uh, where the new variant was, where it was uh, spreading, and, uh, and acted to uh, restrict it there. And of course, uh, we will keep those measures uh, under uh, review every uh, every couple of weeks, and, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, let's go to Rachel from uh, from Kent. Given the new variant is spreading so rapidly in Kent, would consideration be given to rolling out the vaccine more widely in certain geographical areas and expanding the age range to include the working age population? Well, Rachel, that's a very interesting uh, and e excellent question. At, at the moment, uh, the, 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 the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation uh, is, I believe, uh, sticking to its priority list. And what we want to do, what they want to do, is, is really to take out of the, the path of the vaccine as many targets as possible of people who could uh, be likely, uh, who are likely to die from COVID. And that's, I think, the sensible uh, thing to to do, uh, and so that's why uh, we're beginning by focusing on the, the 80 plus group, those are, who are particularly uh, vulnerable, those in care homes, uh, uh, and so on. I think that is the, uh, the, the right way forward. And, and, and Patrick, it's a, it's, a, it's a relevant point, isn't it? The, the, there's no reason to think that this new variant of the, uh, of, of the virus is uh, any more dangerous than the, uh, the, uh, the, the existing strain. Well, well, I think that's correct, Prime Minister. There, there are three questions for the new variant. One is, does it transmit more readily? The second is, does it alter the disease course? And the third is, does it alter uh, the ability of the immune system to tackle it in some way to, in people who've either been exposed to previous infection or those who are vaccinated? And where we are now is that the um, evidence that this can transmit more readily is, uh, is becoming clear in terms of the uh, data of the rapid spread of this uh, virus across areas. So the transmission is increased. Uh, we can't say exactly by how much, but it's clearly substantially increased. So it's more transmissible. That's why it's spreading so fast and we see it growing in many areas. 
no evidence that the disease causes any difference. If you catch it, the disease is the same as, or looks the same as any other form of COVID um, infection. Uh, and in terms of the immune response, there's nothing to suggest that this won't have the same uh, um, uh, um, susceptibility to antibody attack from vaccine or um, pre-existing infection as uh, any other form. So. Uh, no, at the moment, the, the vaccine looks as though um, it should be as effective, and that's obviously being looked at. Brilliant. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you, Rachel. Let's go to Laura Koonsberg of the BBC. Uh, thank you very much, Prime Minister. Dozens of countries have closed their borders to the UK. How confident can you be tonight that you can get the delays and disruption under control? And you said you just spoke to Emmanuel Macron. Did he give you any commitment on when he would open the border with France? So is he asking for truckers and travellers to be tested before they are allowed in? And Sir Patrick, if I can ask you, public health directors in Manchester and in the West Midlands are telling people if they've arrived to the area recently from a place of higher risk like London, they should self-isolate. Is that the right advice to be giving people? Well, thanks, thanks very much, uh, Laura. And yes, it was a, a, an excellent conversation with uh, the French president. He stressed he was keen, I, I would say, to, to sort it out in the next uh, few hours, if we can, and uh, our teams will be uh, working on it uh, flat out. And uh, if we can get a result, then that would be great. But we'll uh, we'll do it as fast as we as fast as we can. Um. I think local directors of public health clearly have got um, the role to make sure their local population is looked after and they're doing a fantastic job and, and, and therefore they need to make decisions that they need to make in order to do that. Um, the, in, the new variant is spread around the country. It's localised in some places, but we know it's got, there are cases everywhere. So it's not as though we can stop this getting into other places. There's some there already. Uh, the, the message that's been very clear, and I think I want to reinforce it, is stay local. I mean, people shouldn't be travelling around the country at the moment. Stay local. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Laura. Let's go to Robert Pesson, ITV. Uh, Prime Minister, it's almost the end of the year. You must know by now whether we're going to get a free trade deal, will we? And given the uh, events uh, that you've seen in Dover, the great difficulties, do you still believe that the UK will, I think your words, prosper mightily on what you call, in uh, Australian terms, most people call no deal. And just very quickly for, for Patrick Valance, um, as I understand it, 10 to 15% of the new variant is outside London and the South East. Will tier three be enough to keep the new strain in check outside of London and the South East? Uh, well, I'm just going to, uh, alas, uh, Robert, repeat what I think you've heard me say many times. I had a great conversation, by the way, with, uh, with, with Emmanuel, as I've said. It's his birthday, by the way. Uh, but we, we vowed uh, to, to stick off Brexit uh, because th that negotiation is being conducted, as you know, uh, via the, the European uh, Commission, and that's quite proper. Um, and... Uh, the position is is unchanged. Uh, there are there are problems. The, the, it's vital that everybody understands that uh, the UK uh, has got to be able to control uh, its own uh, its own laws uh, completely, and also that we've got to be able to control our own our own fisheries. And uh, it, and it remains the case uh, that WTO terms uh, would be. Uh, more than satisfactory uh, for the UK, and uh, we can certainly cope with with any difficulties that are that are thrown in our way. Not that we're, we're not that we don't want a deal, but the WTO terms would be entirely satisfactory. And prosper mightily remains an extremely good description of life after uh, January the first. Either way, it's, it's probably worth adding that actually um, some of the reason why we've not seen. Uh, big problems in, in Kent today is because actually the transition period uh, work that's been going on for very many months and, and years even um, is coming to fruition a few weeks earlier, a couple of weeks earlier than anticipated. But it does mean that the uh, measures like having Manston available, uh, like having the movable barrier available uh, and like having, uh, you know, in including welfare uh, for the hauliers uh, is all in place. And so, uh, to, to a large extent, it, it has shown that we are ready. Bro, sorry. Uh, um, as you say, the new variants around the country, it's in very high uh, proportion of cases in London, the South East and East, but it is present in other places as well. Um, and the 
lessons I think that you have to learn about this virus generally is it's important to get ahead of it in terms of actions. It's important as rates start to go up that things are controlled. And so we need to monitor the rates very carefully, look at them all the time regularly as is being done by Public Health England and take the action on tiers on the basis of the evidence as it accrues. The one thing I would say though is that, um, and I've said this before, I think over this period where in some parts of the country people are mixing with people they haven't been mixing with as part of Christmas, it's really important to follow the rules carefully and to make an assumption that you could be infectious. You could be the person spreading it to somebody else and behave accordingly. Thanks, Robert. Uh, Gary Gibbon, Channel 4. Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, given what we're hearing about the variant, can you really guarantee that schools will be back on the start, start dates they now have? And just following on from Robert's question there, um, is tier three fit for the job if this mutant version of the virus, this, this variant, is galloping through the population? Can you be quite sure that we won't, almost all of us, be in tier four or even tier four plus soon after this break? Well, uh... Gary, I think the most useful thing I can tell you at this stage is obviously we, we want, if we possibly can, to, uh, to get schools back in the staggered way at the beginning of, uh, of January in the way that, uh, uh, that we have set out. Uh, the, the, uh, but obviously we, we, like all, as you expect, the commonsensical thing to do is to follow the path of the epidemic and, as we, sh as we showed uh, last Saturday, uh, to keep things under constant uh, constant review, it's, but it is very, very important to uh, get kids and keep kids uh, in education if you possibly can. I believe that's something that uh, everybody understands. Um, the, the, the doubling time of this infection with the new variant is quite fast. Uh, it is more transmissible. It does require more action in order to keep it down, and that's why Tier 4 is important. And um, what we did see was that in areas uh, that had lower restrictions, you could still see growth in some places. So it is the case that uh, the measures needed to try to make sure that we reduce contact, we keep the basics in place, make sure that we uh, don't give the virus a chance to spread are uh, even more important with the new virus. It's got to be d taken incredibly seriously. Not because, again, just to re-emphasize, not because the virus itself gives a more severe illness, but just because it spreads more rapidly. Brill, thanks. Let's go to Pippa Creer of the Mirror. Um, hello, Sir Patrick. UK, co UK COVID cases have doubled in a week. Matt Hancock says the virus is out of control. And we already knew that tier three wasn't working in London or Kent. Plus, we've seen people traveling across the country for Christmas. Why isn't the whole country now in lockdown? And Prime Minister, throughout this pandemic, you seem to have frequently overpromised and underdelivered. Whether it's turning the tide in 12 weeks, a second national lockdown being a disaster, cancelling Christmas being inhuman, it's become a pattern that we're increasingly familiar with. Why do you keep doing it? And do you recognise that it causes public confusion? and crucially, erodes public confidence. Um, again, the uh, tier decisions are not, uh, are not ones that, that, that uh, are for me, but um, I will say that the uh, evidence on this virus is it spreads uh, easily, it's more transmissible. We absolutely need to make sure we've got the right level of restrictions in place. I think it is likely that this will grow in num numbers of the variant across the country. And I think it's likely, therefore, that measures that need, to need to be increased in some places in due course, not, uh, not reduced. So I think it is a, a case that this will spread more. Yeah, and Pippa, on, on, your, on your general uh, point, I think you have to imagine a kind of actual world in which we'd uh, kept the country in some kind of perpetual lockdown or uh, kept kids out of school for uh, the best part of a year. And I think that would have been uh, really disastrous. And it was very, very important to keep moving forward as far as uh, we possibly could. I think, I think that was the right thing uh, to do. And now that we've got the, uh, the vaccine coming uh, in the way that we have, I think that uh, we can certainly look forward to a very, very different world uh, for this country uh, from Easter onwards, as I think uh, 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 Chris and, uh, and Patrick have, uh, have said before, and uh, it, it's very, very important for, uh, not just for 
uh, people's morale, but it's also totally realistic. We have every reason to be extremely hopeful about uh, this country's ability uh, to bounce back next year uh, from COVID. And I think that is the right thing uh, to say then and now. And I'll go now to Francis Elliott of The Times. Hello, uh, Prime Minister. Um, I'd like to talk about lateral flow tests. Uh, this is something that you've repeatedly held up as a, as a way out of this. Um, is it your hope and expectation that we'll get to a point where you, they can be self-administered uh, and what sort of change would that mean? Uh, and Sir Patrick Fallance, do you agree that, um, that they should be self-administered? Uh, MHRA seem to have a problem with that. Um, and secondly, when can we hear more about this new variant? You, the, the, the nerve tag briefing says that we'll get better data uh, this week. What time this week and what sort of extra data will we get in what sort of time frame? Uh, and just finally, Prime Minister, again, um, given that we've heard today, it's obvious that, the review, that, that, that we are clearly going to see these uh, ex uh, restrictions expanded. Are you still sticking to the um, 30th as the review date or could that come forward? Uh, well, th 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 just on the MR MHRA and the, and the review date, obviously uh, we review all, all, all measures every, uh, every, every couple of weeks. Uh, Francis, and uh, look, on the, on the MHRA and, and lateral flow, uh, that's for the MHRA, I, and it would be totally wrong uh, of, of, of me to, you know, try and superimpose my, my views on them, if that's for them. Uh, on the new variant, um, nerve tag met again today. Uh, a lot of work was done over the weekend uh, trying to bring in more groups to look at the problem and to look at the new data that's become available. Uh, and that reinforced the view from Friday that this is uh, transmitting, more transmitting more readily, uh, that it doesn't, uh, as far as we can see, alter the course of the disease. Um, and the work, as I've said, in terms of the immune response is, is ongoing, but there's no reason at the moment to suspect that there's a change there. So uh, nerve, those data will come out and, and nerve tag minutes will be published, but the conclusion was that the uh, um, experts have uh, high confidence in the fact that this is transmitting more readily. And that, again, reinforces the point that it's important to get ahead of this and to make sure that the tiering system is adequate to stop things going, not to watch it and, and, and react in retrospect. And given that we're entering a period of inevitable mixing, I think there will be some increases in numbers over the next, the next few weeks. Thanks very much, Francis. David Hughes, lastly, David Hughes of PA. Uh, Prime, Prime Minister, just going back to Pippa's question to you about over-promising, uh, you said it was important to boost morale but doesn't morale take a hit when you overpromise and underdeliver, as has happened with the Christmas measures? Uh, and on the vaccine, of the 500,000 doses, what proportion have gone to people in hospital hubs, NHS workers, for instance, and what proportion have gone to people in care homes, the most vulnerable? Is it possible to do mass scale community vaccinations with the Pfizer vaccine? And how many doses have we got this year? Well, David, first of all, it, of course you're right. It is very important to be as realistic as we as we possibly can. But as I was saying to uh, to Pippa, I, I don't think anybody uh, would want to have seen this country spent the last year uh, in a total uh, lockdown uh, of a, you know kind of at least some uh, people have recommended uh, and with kids out of school. I mean, we've had to do what we can to keep our economy moving and and uh, uh, and to keep going forwards. And I think we've got actually to the end of the year in a position where uh, you know in spite of a uh, of everything people have said the the UK is the the, the first country to have uh, distributed a, a clinically approved uh, vaccine uh, and now gone into the arms of, uh, of 500,000 people uh, across the country mainly uh, the elderly and the vulnerable and uh, you know you may know I, I, I find that a reason for for hope and for and for and for confidence and uh, and you know I, I think you should too. Is that it? No, wait a minute. Was there another question? Um, only what proportion of the five hundred thousand have gone to care homes? What proportion have gone to NHS workers? How difficult is it to roll this out in the community? That's a very good question. Look, I I, I think that. Uh, 
we will try to update people as, as when we have more uh, immediately available data about where it's it's going and precisely. But uh, in my understanding at the moment, it is very largely it is some of it's yes going to NHS workers, some of it's going to to care home workers, and and there are all sorts of good reasons for that. But the the vast uh, bulk of the doses are, at the moment are going to uh, the, the over 80s and the particularly clinically vulnerable, which is, I think, what people uh, would want and, and expect, because what we want to do in these early stages is really take as many potential targets for the vaccine, those who uh, really are at risk of, uh, of dying, alas, from uh, COVID, uh, and get them out of the, the path of the disease, and that's what the, the vaccine does. Okay, everybody, thanks very much. Thank you.